Hi there friends, Morgan with Event Answer here, and today I'm making cheesecloth ghosts. With a few basic supplies, you can have these adorable decorations for your home or party. So follow along and I'll show you exactly how I made these. I've gathered up all the supplies to make the ghosts here, and the two most important things that you'll need to purchase are cheesecloth and liquid starch. The cheesecloth that I purchased came in a package with six yards of material in it, and that was more than enough to create all three of the ghosts you'll see today. I'm using just general liquid starch here, which you can find in the laundry department at your local store, and the rest of this you probably have laying around your house. So I've got a glass bowl here that I'll use to put my liquid starch into, some wax paper to protect all of my surfaces, and now it's time to raid the recycle bin. So old plastic bottles, paper towel tubes, crumpled up old paper, anything you can make a form with is gonna be helpful here. I've also got a few balloons to make rounded heads and some floral wire to make arms for our ghosts. So first of all, let's prep the surface. Once you make your ghosts, you can't move them until they're completely dry. So I'm gonna make all my ghosts on a sheet of cardboard that I can pick up and move out of the way and work on the next ghost. So I'm gonna cover this in a couple sheets of wax paper and this is gonna keep your ghost from sticking to the cardboard below it. Any paper items you use to build your ghost or set on top of will stick to the liquid starch. The first ghost we're going to make is going to have a rounded head and two arms pointed outwards. And the most important thing you want to remember when building the form for your ghost is the only details that are going to be seen through the cheesecloth is the upper side of all of your edges. So having a round head and having the curved part of the arm is going to be the only real detail that we'll see out of this form. So the curved bottom of the bottle isn't going to make any difference. So I've just cut the top of this bottle off and I'm going to put a balloon on on the inside and that'll make a nice rounded head for my ghost. And now I'm going to secure the balloon to the bottle using some tape. For visual purposes, I'm using some masking tape here so you can see where I'm placing the tape, but I would actually recommend using some plain old clear scotch tape to secure anything together. I found the starch cheesecloth stuck really badly to the masking tape when I tried to remove it from the form. So anytime you use masking tape or any paper or cardboard in your form, you do want to cover it with plastic wrap because the plastic wrap won't stick to the starch and the paper things will. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure everything is nice and secure before moving on to building the arm. Arms. I'm using a little bit of floral wire wrapped around my fingers a couple times to make a loop and that loop I'm going to bend in half to make the arms for the ghost. Now I just had floral wire laying around my house but you could always use copper wire, modeling wire, or I've even seen people use coat hangers for something like this. As long as you can bend it into the form you want, go ahead and use that. I put a little bend into the bottom of my loop so that the arm will go away from the bottle or the body of the ghost. And I'm going to secure that with a little bit of tape to the midsection of my bottle. Once I've got it secured, I'm going to bend the arm a little further away from the body and give it a nice curve on the top because that curve is what you'll really see through the cheesecloth. Once you've got both sides done, we can now start prepping our cheesecloth. So I'm going to unravel it until I've got enough to loosely drape over the entire form. It's important to cut enough material so that the cheesecloth can drape over the form and pool at the base on the table. If you don't have enough cheesecloth on the table, the ghost won't be able to stand. So cut it a little longer than you think you need because you can always trim it off later. I then unfolded my cheesecloth to make sure it would drape completely over my form and I wasn't shy on any dimension. Once I've got that, it's time to prep the starch and it's easy as pouring it into a bowl. I'm not going to dilute my starch with water because I want to achieve maximum stiffness with the amount of liquid that's there for my fabric. I have seen people water it down and put it in a sprayer, but I find it just as easy to put this in the bowl and wring out the excess than it would be to do that. Now I'm going to unfold my fabric once again until I have that wide square and I can drape it over my form. So this may take a little bit of finagling, but it will go back to its original shape. Once I've got it back to its original size, I'm gently going to drape it over the form and it's really important that you get it into all the nooks and crannies to really accentuate the shape that we build into our form. So I'm going to lift it up and make sure it gets right into the shoulder of my ghost and it's right around all of the curves. And now it's a matter of playing with the fabric until you're happy with the draping of the cheesecloth over the form. 
Once you're happy with the draping on the upper part of the ghost, it's time to shift our focus to the base. And this is important because the entire weight of the ghost is supported on the cheesecloth that is touching the table now. So we want to make sure we get a nice surface area that will be able to support the ghost and he won't be tipsy. The great thing about working with this material is you have a long work time, so you can fiddle with it as long as you like, and you don't have to worry about this drying instantly on you. So feel free to play with it until you're satisfied with the look of it. And if you do have spots where it's a little clumpy and the cheesecloth has rolled up too much, you can always come in with a pair of scissors and trim away any extra places that you're not happy with. Once you're satisfied with the draping of your ghost, you can set it aside to dry for several hours. Now, I did find the starch does take a while to dry up completely, so I put mine in front of a fan, or you could always use a hairdryer to speed up that drying process. Now, I thought it would be super fun to go beyond a basic shape of a ghost and make man's best friend and make a dog ghost. So I'm just using all kinds of scraps of bottles and cardboard. I had a coffee creamer bottle that's the head wire for the ears, and I'm just making a simple form because remember, it's only the top side that really matters. So getting the ears and the head shape correct, and then adding a super fun tail made of cardboard. And I got that cardboard all covered up with plastic wrap, but you will see that I didn't get all of my masking tape covered with plastic wrap. So I did struggle with my removal later uh, and would encourage you to use all the plastic wrap. On the dog ghost, I ended up using two layers of cheesecloth. Uh, I did this to give it more rigidity around the form, and this also gives it more opacity. So if you're looking for a really transparent ghost, go with one layer of cheesecloth, but if you'd like to see it better, go with multiple layers of cheesecloth. And now it's a matter of setting everything aside to dry for a little while. So once everything has dried up, I'm gonna pull everything back out and start applying the faces. Now you can apply the face after you've pulled off the form, but I found that it was easier to glue on all of my eyes while I still had the form inside the ghost to support it. So I'm just taking a little bit of black felt to cut out some really cute, happy eyes. I love cute ghosts, um, but you could always do angry eyes or sleepy eyes to set the mood for your ghost. And I'm just going to attach those using a tiny bit of hot glue. You could also use white glue or fabric glue just as easily. With the face finished, it's time to remove this from its form. Gently left the edges off the wax paper and get your hand between the form and the cheesecloth and gently pry it loose. Now, it will flex a little bit and that's okay. The ghost will still hold its form. Mine is sticking pretty bad because of the masking tape, so you should have a lot easier time than what I did here. If you do happen to dent the ghost while pulling it out, you can just press that right back out and it should still hold its shape. You can pick it up by the base and it'll flex quite a bit, but it will still stand up. So this little ghost is ready for a party. This was such a fun project to put together and I cannot wait to put these out for my holiday decorations. If you enjoyed this project, give it a like and hit that subscribe button below. I'd love to have you join our creative community. I do all kinds of party and event setups, balloon tutorials, and tips so you can plan a spectacular party of your own. If you'd like to check out some of those videos, I've got them right over here. And until the next time, remember to stay creative. Bye!